Hey guys and welcome back to another how to FPV video and today we're going to be talking about charging. So you've just gotten back from the day of flying and you probably already have charged something but you may not have been doing it correctly so in this video we're going to talk about how to correctly charge and especially balance charge. All, we'll debunk some myths on parallel charging and how dangerous it can be and ultimately it comes down to how you treat your batteries and then how you put them on the charger at the end of the day. Also we'll talk about you know C rating, can you charge at multiple C to get uh, batteries charged faster, uh, what power supplies and what chargers you could possibly use and what a balance board is good at and why you might not use parallel charging or something like that. Also talk about some battery checkers as well, which these things are super cheap and they save lives, okay? So first of all, let's just go ahead and say that you just got back from a day of flying and you've got three batteries here and you have no idea how to charge them. You've been pretty much just going and plugging them up because you have a very cheap small charger and you can plug one battery in at a time and you gotta wait 45 minutes, okay? So for this, the most part, lithium polymer batteries charge at one C, which C rating is kind of a weird arbitrary thing, but in a nutshell, it's basically whatever the capacity of the battery is. So for the example, this battery is a 1.1 amp hour battery or an 1100 milliamp battery. So if I wanted to charge this battery at 1C, then I would be able to charge it at 1.1 amps, okay? 2C, obviously you multiply that by two, you charge this at 2C at 2.2 amps. Now, why would you do that? Well, ultimately charging it at a higher amperage or a higher C rating is gonna charge it quicker. Now, it's pretty much linear, so if you charge it at 1C, any battery is gonna take about 45, 35 to 45 minutes. You charge it at 2C, it's gonna take about 20 minutes, okay? You charge it at 3C, maybe 15, to 20 it kind of like linearly gets shorter and shorter depending on how hard and how fast you charge the battery but if you charge batteries quickly it can reduce the life of the battery so we try to refrain from charging one battery at an extreme amount of amperage and why why we might not do that or the way around that is charging multiple batteries at 1c so they're all done and we have multiple batteries done in that 30 to 45 minute window and they were all charged at 1c which is a safe charging amount okay so again like i said we just got back from the the field we've got three batteries here we don't know what to do with them we've just got a parallel charging setup and i'll talk about parallel charging here in a little bit because there is a lot to be said about that and we'll talk about chargers here in a minute but i'm just kind of giving you a scenario here so you can see like what i might do to get ready to go charge if i'm going to go flying the next day so again, I've got three batteries here. I don't know what states they're in. I know they're just discharged, okay? Well, I'm gonna grab two of these guys, which are these little cheap, about $3 uh, battery checkers. I fill the ends of them with hot glue because they are really loud. This one is not filled, so you'll notice how loud this is. I'm gonna plug it in. I'm gonna check the voltage of this battery, okay? So what I'm doing, I'm plugging it in. I'm waiting for it to go and I'm gonna see that it's at 23.1 volts. This is a 6S battery, so 23.1 volts. This one, and why I have multiple is because it takes a second to see that, so I can plug multiple in. This one's at 22.9, and this one's at 23.1. Okay, so they're right around 23 volts um, as far as the entire battery is concerned. Now, I have, I do know that both of the, or all of these batteries are in good shape as far as uh, maybe one cell might be dead if you have some battery that's you know really old. I know these batteries are fairly new and I know they're in good shape, so I can assume that all of the cells inside of them are all fairly well balanced because I do balance charge my batteries every single time that I charge. And we'll talk about balance charging a little bit and why it's important towards the latter of the video. But again, so I've got three batteries here. I wanna plug them up and I wanna charge them, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'll just go ahead and do it on this charger because I do have it plugged in, is I'm gonna turn my charger on and I got my balance lead, or sorry, my parallel board here, which is hooked up, and it has two to six S as far as our balance leads are connected, or, or as far as our balance leads are concerned, and then it's got six XT60 connectors, and it's plugged into, this is an iCharger X6, and it's got a 400 watt power supply, and then you're plugged into the wall here, okay? So you can do this with batteries, but pretty much everybody has access to AC or alternating current in their house, 120 volts. If you're overseas, it might be 220. Um, but yeah, you pretty much say, hey, I'm gonna plug in here. I got it plugged into the wall and I'm gonna, I'm gonna parallel charge these. Now, what does parallel charging mean? Well, that means that I'm gonna essentially make all of these batteries one big battery because all of them are roughly around the same voltage. Like I said, they're right around 23 volts. Now you don't wanna do this if it's anything over about 0.2 to 0.3 volts per 
per cell difference. So if this battery was at 23.5 volts and this battery was at 23 volts and this battery was at 22.5 volts, I wouldn't charge these batteries together in parallel because they're not acting like one big battery. They're all at separate voltages and I wanna make sure that they're all roughly around the same again between that 0.2 and 0.3 volt range difference so that I can make sure that when I plug them in, nothing bad is going to happen. Yes, you can plug it in with a large varying difference as far as voltage is concerned, and usually nothing happens, but just be aware that things can happen so it'd be safe, so I don't go beyond that 0.3 volt range, 0.2 volt. So I'm always gonna plug in the balance lead first. I plug in my balance lead just to make sure that I'm plugging into the right thing. It popped up on the screen and it gave me different voltage readouts for each individual cell. I don't usually look at that because I'm, like I said, these batteries are fairly new. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our XT60 connection now. Now we're plugged in, it says 23 volts on there. I'm gonna plug in my next battery in parallel, which means I'm you know, connecting these things as if they were one big battery. Plugged in the balance lead first and then I plugged in the XT60 plug in the balance lead, and then the XT60. Okay, so now we're in parallel, so we've got three batteries here. They're all acting as one battery, so this is not no longer one individual 1100 milliamp pack. This is three individual 1100 milliamps pack acting as a 3300 milliamp 6S pack, okay? So that's essentially how we're treating it because we're charging in parallel. Now on the screen, the, the charger has no idea that I've plugged these in as far as parallel is concerned. It thinks this is just one battery and it has no idea, it doesn't care. So it, that doesn't really matter. It just knows that there is voltage coming in. This could be, you know, 50, uh, 1500 or like 100 milliamp packs or, or it could be one 3300 milliamp pack. Please don't do the math on that, it doesn't work out. But you get the idea, it doesn't care. It just sees one voltage and it's consistent. Now. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna charge these batteries at 1C in parallel, and that would mean charging them at what? 100, or one amp, 1.1 amp times three, because we got three of them, 1C, that means we're gonna charge it at 3.3 amps. So I go ahead and pop this up, I go over and I wanna set my, I know you can't see this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. I got it set to 3.3 amps. I'm charging it, these batteries will be done in about 45 minutes, okay? So all three of these are gonna be done in 45 minutes and that is parallel charging. And you can do six, you can have multiple channel chargers, which I'll talk about in a second. So you can do multiple channels and why you might need multiple channels. Um, and you can do six batteries, you can even plug another LiPo charge or another uh, balance lead into this balance lead and you can charge you know, maybe nine batteries or 10 batteries, 11 batteries all at once on one channel. Um, and you can charge them at 1C and you could have all of those 11 batteries done assuming your charger can handle that kind of output, which we'll talk about here in a second when I get to chargers, but you get the idea. You can charge all the batteries at once. The huge thing about parallel charging, which I'm gonna talk about now, is when you're parallel charging, you need to make sure, like I said, that you're treating each individual battery as if it is going to be part of one large battery. And this is a huge mistake in why parallel charging gets such a bad rap, is because a lot of people don't check the batteries before they put them on the parallel charger, and they have my, maybe an old battery where one of the cells is dead, and they, you know, they just don't take care of their batteries, and they plug them in, and they walk away from the charger, and ultimately it leads to a house fire, and losing a lot of personal items, um, because these things do just catch on fire really easily easily if you mess with them as far as plugging them in with very slightly, or sorry, not slightly, but very largely varied voltage. Um, and I would say 99.9% .9 of the problems that you ever see with lithium polymer batteries uh, catching on fire is usually a charging related issue or someone poking a nail into them, okay? So it's usually a human error with something to do with the charger. It might be a low quality charger or it might just be something where the human plugged it to the charger incorrectly and that led to a problem, okay? So if you accurately assess your batteries, you understand, hey, I've got all these batteries within a certain voltage, 0.3 volts of each other, and I've plugged them all in parallel, and I know that my charger can handle it, um, well, that is going to be perfectly safe as far as parallel charging is concerned. Um, I am not responsible for any parallel charging issues. I just wanted to throw that out there, out there, but I have been doing this since day one, and I have not had a single problem. So if you do it accurately and you do it correctly, it can be very safe and it can be very effective. And that's why parallel charging is great because you can charge a bunch of batteries at once and you only need one powerful charger versus charging each individual pack and having to sit there and waiting 45 minutes or charging one pack at a high amp, amp, amp draw and ultimately taking away from the battery's life because you're pumping amperage into it really quickly, which they don't like that. They like discharging quickly, but not receiving a lot of amperage quickly. 
So now that we've talked about parallel charging and charging in general, let's go ahead and talk about chargers real quick. So I have two different chargers here. I've got a charger here, which is this is our ethics charger case, which has an I uh, or an X6 charger within it, and it's got a 400 milliamp power supply inside of it. It's all inside this little case right here, right? Well, this is a great power setup, and it will charge roughly highest output, probably around 18 to 20 amps. Okay, so that depends on depending on what kind of voltage you're putting into it. On this particular setup, we're putting in 110 volts because I'm here in the United States and that you know limits the the current output on a six cell to about 20 amps all right so we could charge at 20 amps so I could technically have you know 20,000 milliamp 6s packs and charge them all at once and not have any problems out of the charger now I can charge you know three 6s packs at 4c if you really wanted to and it would be perfectly adequate so that's what's nice about having a high powered setup but this charger only has one channel. Why does having multiple channels matter or why would you want multiple channels? If you have two chargers, that's great. You might be charging your Fat Shark battery on the lower end charger and you might be charging your flight packs on the beefier charger. Okay, well, something like this, which is an i406 Duo, this is a pretty expensive i charger. These are about 300 bucks and they have two chargers, okay? Or sorry, there is actually two chargers in here, but um, you get the idea, you get two separate channels here and why you might need that is well, you know, if you're charging different cell counts, say you want to charge 6s here and you want to charge 3s here, well you can't charge this you can't charge different cell counts on on a parallel board. It all has to be the same cell count. If you plug in a 3s to a 6s, if you plug in a 3s to a 4s, any of that it's going to cause a problem. It's going to force voltage from one of the batteries into the lower voltage battery and ultimately the lower voltage battery, the smaller cell count is going to catch on fire or burst, okay? So please keep that in mind when you're talking about parallel charging only use the same voltage batteries and the same cell count batteries when you're charging in parallel so if you have a multi-channel charger like this one and you plug in a 2s battery on this parallel board and you plug in a 3s battery on this parallel board well you have two different channels so it doesn't matter these are completely individual to each other and you can charge that that's nice but this is an expensive charger so I kind of say you know maybe buy this or buy one of these and then have another charger where you can separately charge like your little packs or your Tyrannus battery battery or your you know fat shark battery on one channel and then you know you can charge your flight packs on the other channel or maybe you charge you know six flight packs on this and six flight packs on this and that's how it works and the other cool thing about two channels is if you come back at the end of the day and you have some batteries that are maybe you know say a 4s battery you got some that are 14.8 volts per cell and you crash a little early on the other packs and they're at 15.2 volts per cell well you can put the 15.2 volts per cell batteries on this one and the 14.8 batteries on this one okay so you get the idea of the two different um the two different channels now i know people are going to ask what's the setup on this so this is an iCharger 406 duo it handles it'll do 40 amps and it'll do up to 6s um, and this is actually a hp um an HP power supply that you know takes 120 or 240 volts and converts it into 12 volts DC, and then that feeds into the back of this charger right here, which ultimately gives you the ability to charge our little DC batteries, which is direct current. Okay, so these are not alternating current; these are direct current because all batteries are direct current. So alternating current transformer, essentially transforming 120 volts AC into 12 volts DC. You can do up to 24 volts, and you can get more power to this. I think it'll do 40 volts per or 40 amps per channel. So you could ultimately, if you had a 24 volt setup, um, uh, you would be able to do, you know, 40 amps per side. And this is really for like big helicopter batteries and that's originally why I purchased it. But it works really well and charges a lot of these things in parallel if you're if you're trying to do that. So I hope that was, uh, you know, informative. I hope you guys learned something as far as charging is concerned. Um, if you really don't want to go the parallel charging route and you've had, it, you know, experience with that, please, you know, buy some cheaper chargers and charge have multiple chargers going at once with one battery on them because it is really a pain in the butt to be charging individual packs over and over and over and over and waiting for each one especially if you're charging at 1c so I hope you guys learned something. If you have any, if you have, if you have any comments, if you have any stories, some horror stories about parallel charging that you want to share with me, put them in the comment section below and I will be sure to read them. I hope you guys learned something today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs>